This game is brought to you in HDTV by LG. Life's good. And we're glad to have you with us here in Indianapolis. And a nod to Michael Stewart, Leslie Jones, and Jamie Lucky getting the nod here as the officials for game one of the semifinals. Well, they haven't met these two universities since back in 1971, just a few miles from here at Hinkle Fieldhouse. And now with such big stakes for the right to advance to the championship game. Stop whatever you're doing, folks, because it's Final Four time from Indianapolis. And it's Lucius who's had to take over the point with the loss of Kalen Lucas, the all Big Ten player who was injured in their second game here in the tournament, a ruptured Achilles in the game against Maryland. And Lucius had that thrilling winner against the Terrapins and has filled in superbly the last two games. That's Rowe in traffic. Nix, the freshman, kicks it back out to Lucius, who can shoot it. Yeah. And he hits the three from the corner. Well, right out of the gate, Jim, Michigan State able to take advantage of a second shot opportunity and knock down a three. That is one of the best times to shoot the three-point shot when you get a second chance. This is Hayward. Horizon League Player of the Year. Mack takes it free. Back of the rim and the long board comes out to Raymar Morgan. Both of these teams are man-to-man -man defensive teams, Jim. They do a nice job pressuring the ball and helping each other out defensively. It's Lucius on the top of the key this time and he's two for two. Corey Lucius. He got off to a start like this. Well, it was in the first half anyway, in the semifinal win against Connecticut last year at Ford Field. Had 11 points in that first half. Now Mack lost it on the dribble drive, and it's Nick's out with it. Morgan takes the jump shot, rattles out. Hayward has it. Bulldogs accustomed to getting off to an explosive start in the tournament so far, but not in this one. Hayward for the first points, and it's a three. You know, Butler wants to control tempo, Jim, but they are an opportunistic, fast-breaking team. That was an excellent example of Hayward trailing and getting an open three. Feeds it down low, Morgan. The foot on the line, it's going back to the Bulldogs. I would expect Michigan State to try to take advantage of Morgan down low against the smaller Willie Veasley, and there you see he just got a toe nail on that end line. Butler, the only Division I team to go undefeated in its conference play this year. Went 18-0 in a league with the likes of Wright State, Cleveland State. Valparaiso, and another three now to knot it at six. Hayward matching Lucius at the other end. Well, already we can see both of these players, Hayward and Lucius, not afraid of being in this big building. Michigan State was in this building last year. Came through this building, won the regional on the way to getting to Detroit in the Final Four. Morgan to Rowe. Long rebound back out to Summers, and it's stripped. Butler with the quick hands. Up ahead to Mack, and the Bulldogs are heading to the line for free throws. Well, so much has been made about Butler, just a 10-minute drive away, six miles, but you combine it all, 1,251 miles for the four teams, fewest all time. Well, the reason for that, the obvious six miles for Butler, I'm sure that skewed that number. But you're right, these teams are reasonably close. All within a day's drive. Right. Duke right. about a 10-hour drive. And Butler now with the free throw with seven unanswered. There's Brad Stevens, just his third year and only 33 years old. How about the record for Brad Stevens? 88 and 14 in three years. All three years taking the Bulldogs to the NCAA tournament. One of two for Matt.
We look at Norred chasing Summers. Good help by Matt Howard. Raymond Green has come in for the first time, and he tries to drive to the paint. He's tripped. Well, he got a fortunate whistle there. I think he tripped over his own feet that time. It's on Matt Howard, who has a problem staying out of foul trouble. Boy, they just kind of bump knees. And that's a tough break going against Matt Howard as you take a look at Chris Allen. We talked about it at the top supporting cast for Michigan State. Allen playing with a torn ligament in his foot his right foot. So he is not 100 percent but still counted on to provide perimeter shooting for Michigan State. It's Avery Jukes taking Howard's spot on the floor for the Bulldogs. He's a 6 8 senior from Snellville Georgia. They're all over Summers here at the start. He has been a blaze in the tournament with 16 threes in four games. Chris Allen in for the first time for the Spartans. Feeds it to Morgan. Challenging right over Hayward. Gets the soft roll. There have been a delay of game there perhaps. Lucius coming out. And Mike Hebler, 6'4 junior, takes his position. And here's a three point specialist on the floor for Butler. It's Zach Hahn, who gives him about five points a game. And that's what he does, Jim. He is what I call an Allen wrench. He's got one unique, specific purpose, and that's to cast threes. As you take a look at Corey Lucius, he may have been injured there, Jim. They're being. They're taking a look at him right now. Perhaps a cramp or maybe something else. That's a foul on Morgan. We have our first break in the action from Indianapolis and underway. I'm going to X the ball here. Corey Lucia is going to set a back screen and then Delvon Rowe going to screen for him and he's going to come right up to the top and get a nice look at the jump shot. Back screen, pin down, jumper. Mark it up. Well executed by the Spartans. Lucius remains out of the game. Looked like bothered by a leg injury. He broke his foot last year in the national title game and had two surgeries over the summer. Missed really playing for months. Now he's uh, off the bench and ready to go check in. So Lucius by the spark plug coming back. Howard remains out of the lineup for the Butler Bulldogs. Hayward and a fight for the ball and that's going to be a foul on Morgan his second. That's a big one. Let's go to Tracy Wolfson. Thanks Jim. Right before that timeout, Corey Lucius came off hobbling. He had tweaked an ankle. He was walking right up and down the court. The trainer looked at him for just a few seconds. You saw him go back in. If I get any more information, it's just something to keep an eye on guys. All right. Thank you Tracy. Delvon Rowe comes in now for Raymar Morgan. So really foul trouble for one of the leaders of this Michigan State team. A lot of spacing and ball movement and screen set and another foul committed by the Spartans. Chris Allen being matched up with the taller bigger Jukes committed the foul on the cut. But Butler does an awful lot of movement with all five players and they keep that lane open. So it puts a lot of pressure on your team defense. That's the fourth team foul on the Spartans here in the first five minutes. It's Jukes taking a big step to the hole and rejected by Green. Summers yet to take a shot. Outstanding player with Summers of the Midwest Regional. Here's Green with a three. And they call it a two. It's a two for Green. Draymond Green, sixth man of the year in the Big Ten and maybe the nation's best off the bench. He certainly is one of them, Jim. He gives them so much, and he's an excellent mid-range jump shooter, as he showed you there. Beasley, this time it's Rowe with the rejection. Right into the arms of Summers. Michigan State had eight blocks last week, Jim, in that game against Tennessee. So they are capable of denying shots at the basket area. It's a foul. On Han. And here you see the smaller Veasley being challenged by Delvon Rowe. A good job by Rowe to get all ball and break contact there. So Lucius 
to shoot two. Since he's come into the lineup for Kalen Lucas. Well, he's had nine thefts in the last two games in the regional mm -hmm. in St. Louis. Four and then five in the regional final against Tennessee. Matt Howard is back for Butler. The five steals tied a Michigan State NCAA tournament record. Jim Butler, seven points have come on a pair of threes from Hayward and a free throw by Matt. They've been denied in the paint area the last few possessions. They've got to continue to probe and attack inside, but they can't force it inside. They've got to be looking for the mid-range jump shot off of this ball screen action that they like to run. Howard, bodies tangled. That's going to be a huge call against Howard. That's his second, and that was one that Brad Stevens could not afford. Just seconds after getting back on the floor, and this is a case where Matt Howard has to understand he's got two fouls. You don't have to root a guy out there. He goes into the swim motion. The defender is in good position. And that's a good call. You get open in the low post with your lower body holding guys off. You don't root them out to get open. You hold them off after you establish position. A 6-0 run by Michigan State. Matt Howard, one of the star players for the Bulldogs, sits down with 14 minutes plus to go in the half. Andrew Smith has taken his place, number 44. Guarding here on Green, who shoots over him, and Green hits a second two-point basket. Hayward takes it inside, and beautiful shot on the run. Gordon Hayward. That time Hayward pulled up a little bit, didn't try to go all the way to the hoop, but Draymond Green did. It's the Draymond Green show at that end of the floor. And he's got a problem he's with the shoe. Yeah, he sure is. Hayward in the paint fadeaway. He's got another one. What a shot. We talked about tempo. Look at how quickly Michigan State wanting to push that ball even after makes. Green. And I think that's something Michigan State has to continue to do. Try to attack in transition. Get some early scoring opportunities so Butler doesn't have a chance to get that stifling half-court defense set. Green, another one. Not this time. Morad up ahead. Hayward. Green tries to close him off. Gets it to the corner, and Hahn off on the three. It's Smith just into the game, and he's going to the line for a pair. Relive the entire tournament with NCAA March Madness on demand. Watch game highlights, buzzer beaters, complete game replays. It's all free at NCAA.com. Well, just a year ago, Andrew Smith, who steps to the line, was playing high school ball about 10 miles from here. Covenant Christian High School. He led the state of Indiana in rebounding. Played some big minutes out in Salt Lake City last week when Howard got in trouble in a couple of games out there as well. Morgan's coming back on the floor with two fouls for Michigan State. That last foul was on Draymond Green, his first. And the fifth on the Spartans. Corey Lucius seems to be okay, Jim. I can't notice anything in his gait after leaving the game momentarily a little earlier. It's a pretty quick cut to get loose into that shot. Long rebound out to Mack. Derek Sherman on the floor for Michigan State, number 41. Trying to help out on the coverage here. Mack tapped out to Hayward. And they say Mack touched it while he was still coming in from out of bounds. Mm -hmm. Avery Jukes called back into action for Coach Brad Stevens and Butler. After the drive here, you see Shelvin Mack. He did a nice job to split defenders, but he's going to touch this ball while he was just coming in from out of bounds. And that's an illegal play. Spartan shooting 55% here in the game's first eight minutes. 
This guy has been under wraps. Darrell Summers, who's averaged 20 points a game in the tournament. That's Morgan fighting for it. It's blocked. That's Keebler who kept it alive. Now Summers with his first shot. Darrell Summers. He had 26 in the win against Maryland. He gets hot. Look out. Well, he's made 16 of 33 point field goals in this tournament, Jim. Shooting with an awful lot of confidence. The coaches say his focus has gone to another level. That's why he's performed as well as he has recently. Sean Van Zandt on the floor for Butler. That's Mack with the short shot. Shelvin Mack. One of the things about Butler that impresses you so much, Jim, is that this team is unflappable. Plays with an awful lot of poise. No matter what the time score situation is, you never get the sense that this team is flustered. Morgan driving in on Hayward. Paul was against Hayward. His first team foul number four. Threes are raining out here in Indianapolis. Jim Nance, Clark Kellogg back here at the Final Four. Butler has not lost since three days before Christmas. 24-game win streak. Having Coach K or Coach Izzo, yeah, we're pretty accustomed to that in recent years. And there's Kalen Lucas after surgery on Tuesday. The leader, the floor leader of the team and back-to-back -back years, first team all Big Ten. Childhood friend of Darrell Summers and roommates there at Michigan State and Summers was with him through the whole surgery on Tuesday. That's what friends do. Stay by your side through the good times and the adverse times. Chris Allen, and it's off the knee of Raymar Morgan. Rowe is back on the floor, and Sherman goes out. Let's take a look. Hard to tell from that angle. I know Willie Veasley got a hand on it. Butler's only lead was at 7-6. 10 of the 14 have come from Hayward, who is not on the floor right now. And it's stolen away. Forced by Lucius. Right back by Jukes. Let's see how they operate without the man who has really been almost all the offense to this point for the Bulldogs. It's Jukes. He can shoot it from there. Careful here. Is this on Morgan? It is on Raymar Morgan, and it's his third foul. What about the play of Draymond Green? Well, he's such a skilled basketball player, Jim. He does a little bit of everything. He's an excellent mid-range shooter, as I indicated earlier, and he also can slip by you because he has such good footwork, understands how to play, and really is the unquestioned leader of this Michigan State Spartans team. Great personality, a hard worker, and a guy who does a lot of little things to help you win. Three fouls on Morgan in less than seven minutes of action. And a foul. And the basket counts. Smack. They're going to give him the basket. Plus one. Well, when a guy gets into his natural shooting motion, there he is gathering it, getting into the shooting motion. When that is the case, continuation applies. And you look at Raymar Morgan, who has been terrific over the last month or so, Jim. Playing with high energy and effectiveness, he has to sit now as he picked up his third foul about 30 seconds ago. And Mack makes it a three-point play. That last foul was called on Chris Allen. That's a big loss, not having the offensive production of Raymar Morgan. But Michigan State has found other guys throughout this tournament run that have stepped up for him. Well, they had Hayward fronting the pass that was coming into row, and Van Zant running behind him, who knocked it out of bounds. Well, you talk about Raymar Morgan, probably seen the last of him now for the first half, and he's one of only three Spartans to ever be uh, well in career top ten rebounding and scoring. There is Summers. 
with his story of the tournament, hitting threes. You mentioned he'd made 16 in the four tournament games. Do you know he made only 26 all season long in 32 games? And I go back to what I said, Jim. The coaching staff will tell you his focus, his attention to detail, his preparation, his practice, all of that has improved. It's become razor sharp. And as a result, this young man is lighting things up offensively. That's the first miss of the night for Hayward. He had hit his first four, including a pair of threes. And I love the patience of Summers. You know, early on, Butler was really in his jersey. Every defender very cognizant of where he was. He didn't force one shot and has capitalized on his opportunity so far in the first half. Six on the shot clock. Green. And that's a big collision with the floor here. <laughs> yeah, Draymond, he may not be fleet of foot, but he understands how to use his feet to get his body between himself and the defender. That's the first foul on Jukes. Friday on CBS, every second counts. Brace yourself for the first medical drama from the producer of CSI, Miami Medical. It's Friday only on CBS, America's most watched network. Green kind of shaking his right hand. He fell awkwardly on that right wrist. Let's see if it impacts his shots here at the line. He's got a pair. Knicks for Rowe. Izzo will shuttle in those players. He's gone 11 deep in all but one of the NCAA tournament games. And it's Smith back on the floor for Jukes. One more for Green. Well, a lot of similarities between these teams. And defensively, they're both solid. Do a good job on the glass, but they also utilize their bench reasonably well. Although Brad Stevens may not go 11 deep, he will get to eight or nine and is very confident in everybody that he'll bring off that bench. Ten Spartans have seen action already. It's Hayward inside the arc, tapped out, kept alive. That was Beasley who saved it for him. Snappy passing. Morad thought about it. Hayward. He traveled trying to make the move on Green. He sure did. He was undecided. Fourth turnover on the Bulldogs. In transition, you have to get to him early. You can't allow him to run into that jump shot off the dribble. He'll make you pay. Nine on the game now for Shelvin Mack, who just got the rebound at one end and pulled up, hit the three at the other. We call that raking it and taking it, partner. You saw it coming. Yep. Lucius dribbles out of the traffic, short on the shot, and it's Hayward. Over the head of Smith. Two point lead. 22 20, Spartans. Here's a look at your game summary and look for Butler. 19 of the 20 have come from Hayward and Mack. Lucius has eight for Michigan State. Jadance Clark Kellogg, courtside. What do you make out of this so far? Well, as you would expect in a two point game, the statistics point that out. Both teams shooting the ball well. They both made three three point field goals. One of the things I'd like to see is. Gordon Hayward be more assertive. His last two possessions, Jim, he turned the ball over. One time he was indecisive with his move and travel. Another time he should have been looking to score and try, instead of trying to pass it and threw it away. And I think that's what Brad Stevens mentioned to him as he came to the bench for that timeout. When you've got the game he has, you have to be thinking about trying to score the ball and put pressure on your defender at all times. Green whips it over. Keebler, long on the jumper. That's 
Mack. Here's your guy Hayward. What you're talking about? There's nothing there. Hayward takes the long three. He's missed his last three shots after making the first four. Nice move, Lucius. But it's stolen away. Keeper wasn't quite ready for the pass. There's Mack for the lead. No. A big time rebound that time from Draymond Green. Yeah. He does everything, Jim. And you look at him, and I tell you what, he just does not look like a typical basketball player because he's got he's he's dropped a lot of weight. So he's got kind of a portly frame, but he's light-footed and he's extremely smart and tough and has a mid-range jump shot that forces you to guard him. And when you do, he'll put it on the floor and go by you. Well, Michigan State's gone almost four minutes without a field goal. Rowe trying to end that. No. That's Norred who stepped right in there, anticipated the pass and the move to the basket by Rowe and got there in time, in position, and took it right in the chest. An excellent defensive play in the right call. Ronald Norad drawing the charge. And Brad Stevens applauded it as well he should. Norad will bring it up. He's uh, talking about a leader, just a sophomore. His first month on campus at Butler, he was elected the freshman class president. Impressive. Got a great personality and obviously leadership qualities to match. Again, just a sophomore. Here he is, Norad. He doesn't like to shoot. He wants to set other people. Sets up Jukes, who had a good look. And he's a pretty good three-point shooter, Jim. Comes off the bench and gives him good interior defense, but he also can knock down the three. A couple of pops now. Last two trips down the floor. Butler with three attempts to take the lead. There's an outside jumper, and it's all there for Green. Norad sees a little seam, so he scoots up in a hurry to Han for the three. And Michigan State walking the ball up the court. He was almost out there getting ready to run the play instead of just calling it. That's Han with a hand on it. 16 on the shot clock. Gordon Hayward. He came out and answered Corey Lucius' three-point shots with two of his own in the first minutes. Trailing on that initial one and then just got himself up, and this was a really tough shot. You've got to be pretty good to be able to make that kind of move and shot, and he is. That's called on Beasley. And that's the sixth team foul against Butler. There you see Gordon Hayward has gone a little cold of late. And Michigan State has kind of started to crawl as you look at the scoring drought both ways. Austin Thornton out there now for Michigan State. Again. They have one of the premier players sitting out with three fouls, Raymond Morgan. And that might be part of the reason they're looking to maybe play a little more in the half court. Nice look. By Good Green. Feed. Yes, Green feeds it inside, and Garrick Sherman delivers the goods. Five minutes and 41 seconds. The Spartans had gone without a field goal before that one. How about the seven assist for Michigan State? Hayward rattles home a three. He's back. <laughs> it doesn't take long for a guy like that. Especially when he's looking at the basket aggressively, which is what his coach and his teammates want him to do. Mismatch and Beasley going to be called for the foul. He was wrestling in there with Sherman. He was giving up an awful lot of size and weight and committed the foul. That's the second on Beasley in less than a minute. It'll be a one on one when we come back to the final four. Coming up, AT&T at the half, Greg Gumbel, Greg Anthony, Seth Davis break down the first half. Plus, President Obama will go one-on-one -on -one against Clark on the White House basketball court. And an AT&T Naismith watch update coming up on AT&T at the half. Here's a little sneak preview, folks. Clark and the president. I'm not going to go oh! down.
Oh, I'm not going, oh, down, I'm not going like down easy. I, like I told that. you I'm not going down yeah, easy. Okay, all right. I like that I'm kind of fight. I'm just a little distracted. I like that kind of fight. You know, I got a few other things on my mind. <laughs> <laughs> I would say so. Yeah, did you, uh, did you post up the president? No, what? didn't post the, him up. I game? didn't want to take advantage. It was actually called POTUS. It was a different form of horse. POTUS, President, president. of the United States. <laughs> I like it. It went right to the wire. It was good television. Ooh. So stay tuned, folks. Well, you know how to tease a story. Well, I've learned from the best. Can't right wait by to my see side. Him. Thank you, my friend. Sherman at the line, 1-1. One -one. Yes, we'll look forward to seeing that at the half. Sherman, a 6'10 freshman from Kenton, Ohio. And his family applauds. We talked about it at the top, at the top folks. Supporting cast for Michigan State. Look at that advantage, plus 10 so far. And you need that, especially when one of your top scorers is in foul trouble. Raymond Morgan sitting with three fouls. That's Mack. Out to Han. Had an open shot. Gave it to Beasley instead. Big time rebound. Skying for it with Summers. That was an excellent execution by Butler because they made the extra pass and got a good look at the three point shot. You see, Michigan State really content, Jim, now to walk the ball up and to try to take advantage of its size in the paint area. Delvon Rowe coming back out for. Michigan State, one of the biggest nights in mixed martial arts history, is not on pay-per-view. It's on CBS. Saturday Night Fights returns with three championship fights two weeks from tonight, only on CBS. Bouncing it in. Beautiful. Summers, Lucius with the assist. Boy, that's understanding exactly what you want to get done in your half-court offense. And a timeout called by Brad Stevens. Well, Jim, for Michigan State, it's been, it's been about multiple contributors. Five different Spartans have scored. Primarily for Butler, it's been Mack and Hayward. And with Matt Howard on the bench, somebody else is going to have to score. Maybe they'll just continue to play through. Mack and Hayward, but I think somebody else has to put the ball in the basket for Butler. Willie Beasley is a double-digit scorer. Van Zant is a capable three-point shooter. Norred is a reluctant shooter. But the Bulldogs need somebody else to get into the point count. And again, they've had to go a good portion of this first half without a 12-point scorer. Matt Howard mm -hmm. sitting with two fouls. And he's their lone inside presence offensively. He's a really good post-up player. Sliding off the rim with a three, and that's going against Michigan State. How about the way the Spartans have been distributing the basketball? Well, you see, that time it was Knicks getting it outside to Lucius. Good cut by Darrell Summers and a beautiful, exec, exec, beautifully executed backdoor cut there. But yeah, they've shared the ball and they've had more players involved, Jim, as I just indicated. I mean, that's one way you rack up the assist. An 80% ratio assist to field goals made is outstanding. That was the second foul on Rowe, and it's a one-on-one -on -one now for Beasley. Really Beasley, the only senior starter for Butler. And this is going to be a team that, when you, know, you look past Jukes and Beasley, they have virtually everyone else coming back next year. And Beasley, who played in the NCAA tournament all four years, it's a pair of free throws. Well, that young man has been part of 117 wins. There you see him, Willie Beasley, and only 21 losses in his four years here. That's more wins he's been involved in than anyone who ever wore the Butler uniform. You know, going back to that 80% assist to made field goals ratio, just to give you some context, a really good team will assist on maybe two thirds of its made baskets. Well, this is Green, left open top of the key and is wide of the mark. It's Hayward who comes back to get the rebound. Van Zant. Norred. 
to set a reluctant shooter. Very much so. And Michigan State understands that, so they'll back off of it. Mack with a fadeaway block by Green. That's the second block by Draymond Green, who's really made up for uh, what they've lost in this first half with Morgan's foul trouble. That's not unusual for Draymond, though. It sure isn't. That's why he was the sixth man of the year in the Big Ten and one of the best six men in the country. Tom Izzo wants a timeout. Less than a minute to go in the half. It's been a good one here. 28-25, Spartans. Here are the foul concerns on the Butler side. Beasley, he has to. Howard play, has played only four minutes in this game. And he is set now. He's going to not return until the second half, you would think. Morgan with three. Allen and Rowe with two fouls each. Well, Butler has had to play without Howard a number of times this year. He's been Dairy Queen nine times coming into the tournament. So foul trouble is nothing new to the Bulldogs as far as it relates to Howard. And they only trail by three. So very much in it. Ten on the shot clock for Corey Lucius. Sophomore guard from Milwaukee takes it to the paint, lost it. With the quick hands, it's Van Zant. Numbers. On the wing, it's Matt. And he hits a three. Big turnaround there. A turnover leading the three. Game is tied. The timeout certainly didn't benefit Michigan State. It backfired on him. Well, one of the concerns, how would Corey Lucius handle ball pressure? Because he had five turnovers last week, Jim. And that time, the Bulldogs got to him. Will Michigan State come up with something here before the half, or will they go to the locker room with this game tied? Green to Summers, on the wing, back of the rim, tipped out, and a timeout called from the bench by Brad Stevens with 2.5 seconds to go in the half, and one shot coming up for the Bulldogs. You've been saying who else would step up for Butler. No one else has made a field goal outside of Hayward and Mack. They have two and a half seconds left in the first half. And it was quick thinking by Brad Stevens. Looked up at the clock on the far side. Yeah, he got him right away. Yep. Jamie Lucky right in his ear. And they'll have a chance to maybe take the lead. And Matt Howard going to inbound the ball. Yeah, you can't get any more foul trouble from that point. Matt Howard. Will inbound it from three quarters court. Well, yeah, just throw it in, Matt, and don't move after that. <laughs> Let's go back to the bench. Right, just, just stay step right down. There. Exactly. Pass. That's Lucius with the steal, his second of the half, and we're going to the locker room with the game tied at 28. Greg Gumble and company coming up from the final four. I might point out that Matt Howard, of course, back on the floor here to start the second half. He played in that regional final game against Kansas State only four minutes in the first half because he was saddled with two fouls. He went 16 minutes in the second half as they beat the two seed in the West bracket. They need production from him. And I also think they need Willie Beasley to be able to step up and score a little bit as well. He's an opportunistic scorer, but he's got to look for chances. Howard got a good shot, but. Off the mark from a couple of feet away. And I think it's important that Michigan State, while executing well in the half court, because they do have a size advantage, especially when Matt Howard was off the floor, they've got to get back to looking for transition opportunities. That's Lucius ripping the nets with another three. He has 11 on the game. His first field goal, though, since a minute and 16 seconds into the game, he hit those quick threes, a pair of them, at the get-go. Raymar Morgan, by the way, will point out with the three fouls. Back on the floor for the Spartans. Hayward gets past Morgan. And is able to draw the foul on Sherman. Game two, it'll be West Virginia and Duke, and many think that that's another one if I may use uh, some terminology from, uh, from D.C., if you will. Too close to call right now. 99% <laughs> of the precincts in West Virginia and Duke. It should be a good one. Yeah, I agree with you there. I felt both of these matchups coming into tonight's action, Jim, were very close. Teams evenly matched. 
and I anticipated the games would be competitive and go right down to the finish. It looks like we're headed there in this one right now. Hayward now 13 of 14 from the line for the NCAA tournament. Interestingly, both of these teams in the four tournament games getting here trailed in the second half at one point in every game. Came back to win. There's a steal by Hayward. Butler, chance to take the lead, but it's stolen back. It was Lucius who got a hand in there, then Hayward who returned the favor. Here's Howard. Not enough spin on that one. Feasley with the second effort, and there's a basket by someone other than Mack and Hayward. And that's the first lead of the game for Butler since 7-6. And the first time we've heard this partisan Butler Bulldog crowd, too since early in that first half. Row backing in on Hayward. Nicely done. A little half hook, and it's a beauty. Well, he knew he had a size advantage on Hayward and got right into the shot that he wanted. That's what you liked about that move. Took his time, surveyed the situation, and then went to work with one of his favorite shots. Mack driving and splits defenders and lays it in off the glass. Talked about the partisan crowd, Michigan State won the regional here last year to advance to Detroit. But they also face here, Tom Izzo estimated some 30,000 Louisville fans going against them. Louisville was the number one overall seed of last year's tournament. Michigan State beat them with a hostile crowd against them. Ball stripped out, and again, it's Hayward who has it. And it might be a reach in foul on Rowe. It is on Rowe, and that's his third. So Rowe and Morgan, two of the starters for the Spartans, each with three. Already a couple of turnovers here in this half by Michigan State. As you see, Delvon Rowe will leave with that third PF. Garrick Sherman also checking out, and Draymond Green back on the floor. Here you see the numbers of turnovers, Michigan State again in 15. In their losses this year, Jim, they've averaged 15 turnovers a game. In the wins, it's been around 12. So keep an eye on that number. Bees late for the keys three. Just barely grazed the front of the rim. Well, you can see Chris Allen just not really able to push off effectively with that torn ligament in his right foot. It's an arch injury for Allen, also injured during the NCAA tournament. Over the top, they go to Morgan, and that's a reach-in foul on Butler. It's going to be on Norred. Tomorrow on CBS, the head of Roto-Rooter is about to become Joe the Plumber. Don't miss the best episode yet of TV's number one new show, a new undercover boss. It's tomorrow only on America's number one network. And put foul on Norred. It's his first. It brings Morgan to the line. He hit a free throw, did Raymar, to win the regional against Tennessee, purposely missing the second one. With about 1.8 seconds to go in that Midwest final. Well, it'll be interesting to see how well and long Morgan and Matt Howard can play with the foul trouble. Howard only has two, but Morgan with the three fouls is a different animal. You've got to be mildly aggressive and very careful when you're teetering on the verge of picking up a fourth foul. Two misses by Morgan. They play four round one and they like to go to Howard. Wow. He Howard was looking, thought he was tripped. Yeah, he was looking for a foul there. Trying to draw the fourth on Morgan. No whistle. Here's Morgan. Yeah, he ran. He ran. He shuffled those feet. He didn't walk. He ran. <laughs> yeah. Here you take a look at Howard. He thought he, had, he was bumped just a little bit. But in that case, you want to still try to play through it so you get a chance for maybe a three-point play. But you're right, Jim. He was just trying to draw the foul. It was already the Spartans with three turnovers and Delvon Rowe with three fouls back on the floor for Tom Izzo. Morgan gets a little... FaceTime with Coach Izzo. And also a better matchup 
for Matt Howard, even though Rowe does have the three foul. Norad takes it inside, and he is fouled by Lucius. Well, Butler is down seven at one time in the first half, now leads by one. Well, Butler just, we call it six miles away from Hinkle Field House. That historic old site where the final scene of the Hoosiers movie took place and some great basketball has been played through the years. But I must point out, Clark, that Butler did travel more air miles to get to the Final Four than any other team. You know, the first week they went out west, San Jose came back home, Salt Lake City. So they traveled 6,562 air miles they logged to get here. So <laughs> right, they got a little six-mile jaunt to get to the to the semifinal. Well, you're saying game. they deserved a short trip <laughs> to the final four then. Is that what you're saying, partner? Norad with one more. Well, I know this. We haven't had uh, at the final four a home team, if you will, since 1972. You remember last year, Michigan State kind of, it was a home presence, obviously, right. but some 75 miles away from That's East right. Lansing. Last home team was UCLA in 1972 when the final four was in L.A. And Butler now with a three-point lead. That's the first time they've upped the number to three. This whole game's been played in a 10-point window. Michigan State's largest lead was seven. That pass almost got away from him. That's going to be on Hayward. Well, you can see both of these teams very comfortable playing in the half court. That means execution, the free throw game, and second shot opportunities become really important the rest of the way. Clark, uh, this week, the Masters is coming our way. Masters Live streams exclusive video of Amen Corner Live, 15 and 16 Live, and featured group live, plus Masters Extra with bonus coverage of the entire field at cbsports.com slash Masters Live and Masters.org. Well, we saw Morgan miss a couple of free throws, and now a miss by Green as the Mountaineers are taking it in. Well, you can see from that graphic there as you take a look at the Mountaineers chomping at the bit waiting for their turn. Butler winning the free throw game and the turnover game. And when you win those areas, Jim, in a half court game, more times than not, you're going to win the basketball you game. You said at halftime, this game may come down to the best free throw shooting team. And that was Howard trying to get the pass inside to Hayward, who they say was held up by Green. He was. He was grabbed by Draymond Green, acted like he was going to set a screen. And in basketball jargon, we call that a slip. You're setting the screen. No, you're not. You're going to slip. And he beat Green and forced him to foul him. It's a second on Green, and it's Morgan for Rowe. Well, this is so disruptive when you've gotten yourself into early foul trouble, Jim. As Morgan did, your playing time is disjointed. It's hard to get a rhythm. You're not able to be as aggressive as you want to. It just makes it extremely difficult to be productive when you're being shuffled in and out because of foul trouble. Howard, he's on the board. Went underneath. Unless Michigan State will commit to running the ball more, this game now favors Butler if you're going to play a possession-by-possession possession game. Excellent footwork here by Matt Howard and the up and under. He is crafty down low and a terrific look at it here, folks. Beautiful use of the rim, but it starts with the footwork. To operate in the low post effectively, you have to have not only a strong base, but very good ability to pivot both ways. Last six points to the Bulldogs. Spartans have gone over three minutes without a basket. And a switch off. That's Howard. Better be careful. And they bumped him with the body. You could see it coming. Yeah, he took a bad angle there, Jim. Took a bad angle. He did the right thing, but the wrong angle. Hey, folks, Monday night at 8, the CBS College Sports Network gets you ready for the biggest game of the year on the NCAA National Championship pregame show presented by State Farm, CBS College Sports Network, which had live coverage of the NCAA salute here on Thursday. All the teams met, got together, and Summers drives in and bump bodies with Hayward. No foul call, but terrific finish. Summers able to finish it off the glass. That's outstanding body control and concentration and a much needed basket for the Spartans. Yeah, after three and a half minutes without one. That's Norred cutting through. And that's worked now twice for him in this half. 
drawing the foul on the drive. Here's Summers. Resistant and challenged by Hayward, but then he just double clutched, hung, and got it off the glass. That's just excellent individual work by Darrell Summers. That's the second on Lucius. And remember, Howard at the other end collected his third. Norad at the line for two. Well, Jim, he is a reluctant shooter and not a very strong free throw shooter either. Only 61% on the year, but he's been good here tonight. Jukes for Howard. Going to take Howard out. He goes the first 541 of the second half. That's more than he played in the entire first half. Norad, you talk about not always an offensive threat. He led the team in scoring in the second round win against Murray State. It was the first time in his career. It took 66 games before. He led the Bulldogs in scoring. Hits one of two at the line. Lob to Summers. That's beautiful execution. You see Norad really upset with his teammates because they didn't give him any help. He was anticipating that Darrell Summers was going to come out top, and he got burned on the back cut. Excellent pass from Lucius. Well, that was Norad getting it back, putting it up, fighting for it again. Scraped off the floor by Morgan. Summers, pull up jumper. That would have tied it. I don't necessarily mind that shot if I'm Tom Izzo because it gives you an opportunity to get a good look at the basket in transition. And many times when you take a quick shot like that, you have a chance to get a second shot. That's going to be Allen on the back, and that's his third. So there are three Spartans now with three fouls. See, Norad thought. Summers was going out to the wing, and he hooked him and then punched it on a beautiful pass. This is excellent execution and a good read by Summers because he took what the defender gave him. And that's finishing with force up top. Boy, he's been efficient tonight, Jim. He hasn't had a lot of opportunities, Darrell Summers, but he's cashed in on most of the ones he's got. Shelvin Mack. Mack. On the floor for Norad. He takes the inbounds pass. Next foul sends Butler into the bonus. That's Jukes. Hayward got suspended underneath. Was really no man's land. And Jukes ran in to help. Picks up the loose change for a basket. And a lead of four. Well, that's twice now we've seen captains from both teams really admonish their teammates. I mean, Draymond Green was going crazy after that second shot attempt. And Norred needed help on the Summers dunk. Keeper now at the controls. With Allen sitting for a, a break until probably after the under 12. And that pass of Greens is stolen by Hayward. And the running penalty. out of time on the shot clock. This is huge, Jim. Yep, seventh team foul. So a one-on-one -on -one coming up. Yep. And the Butler Bulldogs, a 74% free throw shooting team. The fourth on Morgan. And what you're starting to see, Jim, is the lack of additional ball handlers for Michigan State. They occasionally can run some offense effectively through green, but they really miss having a second ball, a second ball handler. There you see the foul trouble really starting to pile up against Michigan State. Morgan, a senior, and not able to give it his full game here. He's set for so much of it. Out with four. One and one for Hayward. He only missed once from the line the entire tournament in 14 opportunities. And this is when Butler is really difficult, Jim, because they space the floor so well and they've got multiple ball handlers and drivers. You're in the penalty, so you have to, and you're behind, so you have to be somewhat aggressive defensively, and that plays right in the Butler's hands in that half court wheeling motion type offense they run. Thornton and Lucius back on the floor. Lucius fortunate to get it back, but it's Beasley reaching in and throwing it down. Butler with its largest lead of the semifinal. Michigan State with its biggest deficit of the entire tournament. 
And a big number there. Five to nothing turnovers against Michigan State. That's Rowe. Hayward defending. Big time move that time. Well, if you're going to be content to play in the half court, as the Spartans seem to be, you need somebody to produce in the low post for you. That's Jukes. Hey. He has not found it from the outside in this one. One nice putback, though, here in the second half. And Butler is in the lead. Quick look at the game summary. Look at turnovers this half. Butler has not committed one in 17 minutes of action. We've got an injury report. Let's go to Tracy Wolfson. Tracy. Thanks, Jim. Shelvin Mack on the bench right now. He didn't play most of that first half, second half with muscle spasms in both of his thighs. He tried to go in for one or two plays, couldn't do it, came back out. They've been putting a pain-relieving gel, massaging it into his thighs. No word on whether he'll get to go back in, guys. All right, thank you, Tracy. And, boy, he's much needed. Of all that he did, along with Hayward, to keep Butler in the game in that first half, they virtually, well, they hit all but three of the 28 points. Mm -hmm. Norred has gotten himself to the foul line a couple of times. Matt Howard has produced a bucket, Beasley as well, so they've made up for the absence of Mack to this point, but 11-23 to go, and... They certainly would love to have Shelvin be able to come back and join them. That's on Norred, his second, and that's the fourth team foul on Butler. Remember, Michigan State has already committed seven over the limit. Lucius lost it for a second. There have been six different Bulldogs who have scored in the half. Clark, to back up your point. Mm -hmm. They're trying to post up Draymond Green. And that's what Michigan State has to do in the half court. Try to play inside out and then knock down some open perimeter shots. Good look for Thornton. And he's not a bad shooter. Well, good execution that time by Michigan State. Deflected off the hands of Butler. Both of these teams have proven to be very comfortable at grinding out games. Summers comes in. They split right between a couple of Bulldog defenders. Well, that was just a breakdown defensively, Jim. He curled off and was wide open and got right to the rim. Lack of communication that time by Butler. He's got 13. Oh, nice curl. Traveling on Hayward. That's their first turnover in 18 minutes. Michigan State has committed five in the half. Yeah, they've been a little sloppy with the orange. There's a walk right there and a deflection. Good anticipation by Norred and then Beasley with the pilfer. And that's what Butler likes to do. They've been out-rebounded by Michigan State, but they're winning the turnover game and the free throw game to this point. That's why they're up by three. Michigan State, the best in the nation, rebounding margin for the second straight year. There's a, another turnover committed by the Spartans. Tough matchup here for Rowe out there with. And there's going to be a foul on Thornton trying to deal with Matt Howard inside. Howard trying to post him up. And again, it's a one and one. Yep. So far since Butler has been in the one and one, Jim, they've had two free throw attempts by Hayward. He went one for two. He made the front end and missed the second. Let's keep track of how much an advantage this actually becomes for Butler since they've been in the bonus for a little while now. Rattles out for Howard. So no, no advantage there. Ten minutes to go. Ten minutes for a spot in the championship game. Over the top to Green, helping out down low. They're going to say Green touched it and he was out of bounds when he did, even though there was a lot of contact going after that pass. Is that not a foul? Wow, there was a lot of contact there. It sure was, Jim. I thought Norad came in and... He did, he came in. Collided with the head of but Green. So, yeah, but sometimes when you're going after the ball like that, it's a 50-50 play. Might be a blood uh, issue here with Matt Howard. No. 
Uh, certainly Stung a cop by that. Yeah, so. certainly a cobweb issue. Yeah. There's Sheldon Mack, so he comes back onto the floor to test those muscle spasms for the second time in this half. This one, you got to try to throw it in the Hayward. That's a block foul called against Green. Wow. That's his third. I think it was the right call, though, because he got there late. He got there late and slid under a little. There he is. Yeah, he got that right hit up hip out. He wasn't squared up to Matt Howard that time. Draymond doesn't believe it or like it, but it was the right call. Again, his third, ninth team foul. will be double bonus after this one. One and one. Howard, having just missed uh, on the front end, gets another chance. And Howard, a 79% free thrower. While Gordon Hayward was the Horizon League Player of the Year this year, Matt Howard was the Horizon Player of the Year in 2009, and he hits them both. We had a situation with the Cornell team, didn't we? Yeah, with Lewis Dale and yeah. Ryan Whitman. Uh -huh. They had two League Players of the Year on the roster. We got a break in the action. Here's the foul situation, growing concern on the right side. There have been 18 calls against Michigan State, 11 against Butler. Brad Stevens. 33-year-old, what a journey to the coaching profession for him. His wife, Tracy, she was a lawyer, but not practicing now, raising their two small children, son Brady, daughter Kinsley. They had a uh, wonderful fundraiser scheduled for almost a year on the eve of the Final Four last night here in downtown Indianapolis. They were the host for the Coaches versus Cancer fundraiser. Raised a ton of money and had so many great coaches from the college mm -hmm. community there. And, of course, he lived up to his obligation can you imagine that on the eve of a Final Four? There they were. Well, I think it speaks to the kind of guy that Brad Stevens is. And it was a terrific turnout. Great move by Delvon Rowe, and he missed the right-hand layup. Boy, and Hayward fights hard for that rebound. That one spun out. Matt Howard, that's why they took the timeout. Butler, he was still groggy, even though he had a couple of free throws. Mm -hmm. Stevens needed to take a look at him. Well, they'll play an awful lot through this guy right here now in the half court, Gordon Hayward. He can make plays for himself or his teammates. Very good with the ball. Norad gives it up. Jukes. Oh, he almost. I thought for a minute there maybe he could elevate. Well, he, over, he overclutched. He didn't go straight up there. The defender got in his path, but he didn't go up quick enough or strong enough to convert on that nice pass from Norad. This is a two-point shot. Green tipped around. Hayward can't save it. Back to Michigan State. Tomorrow on The Amazing Race, get ready for a smashing good time and a heart-pounding chase. It's a new Amazing Race tomorrow after 60 minutes only on America's number one network, CBS. Raymar Morgan is on the floor with the four fouls. Been a tough night for that young man. Early foul trouble has really disrupted his playing time. Boy, Izzo stomping on the sideline, saw a missed opportunity, and Morgan misses the short shot. Well, they've gotten the ball inside twice now, Jim, which is what you have to do when you're playing a half-court game when you have a size advantage. And Delvon Rowe missed the shot that he normally makes, and Morgan missed one there. They have not made a basket in over four minutes. You wonder how could Butler be on top shooting 37 percent and Michigan State shooting 47 percent. You know how free throw shooting and turnovers. That was Morgan who blocked it out of bounds. They'll have 13 seconds. The Bulldogs on the shot clock when we come back. 746 to play in the first national semifinal. We have 746 to play here in Indianapolis. The ball belongs to Butler with 13 seconds on the shot clock. Jim Nance and Clark Kellogg on the scene. I've always admired this about Magic Johnson. Led them to victory, the championship in 79. He's always there in the tournament, not just, you know, when it comes to the Final Four time. He's there, and he's wearing a Michigan State shirt. There's no kind of, like, commercial logo. No. Only allegiance. That's right. And that's class. That really is class, and that's loyalty. 
And those are two of the many wonderful attributes that Magic Johnson has and has displayed throughout his career and life. But right now, his Spartans need to tighten it up defensively without fouling. Five on the shot clock. Hayward trying to get it done on his own. No call as it's stripped away by Green. He's got Allen on a wing, and Norris saw it coming, but can't chase it out of bounds. Back to the Spartans. Good defense here by Michigan State. And that's Morgan doing an outstanding job holding his position. And Green came in for the strip, but Morgan with four fouls. Moving his feet, challenging without fouling. No field goal either way in almost four minutes. Oh, how did that get there? Right over the Beasley back of never Beasley. Saw it. Yeah. He never saw it. Well, this is where I think you got to find a way to get a shot for Summers if you can't get it inside. There he is, Summers. Van Zandt slips under to get the rebound. It was all Butler underneath. Michigan State not hitting the offensive glass. Well, Butler does a good job blocking out. But then you think about Michigan State in the foul trouble. Raymar Morgan, their best offensive rebounder, has four fouls. So he won't be aggressive going after second shots. Hayward lost it. It was fortunate that Jukes was there. Got caught in midair. Now with eight on the shot clock. We'll feed it to Jukes. Five on the clock. Hayward over Green. Tipped around and picked up by Beasley. Shot clock violation. I think it may have hit the rim, though. I thought so, too. Yeah, I, did, I, I thought that was the case, Jim. That's what Brad Stevens is thinking as well, but there hasn't been any move to check it out. See? Let's take a look. No, nope, nope, it was air ball, clear, clearly air ball. Good look at it right there. And alas, Beasley had to try to rush the shot, but it wouldn't have mattered. Violation. Here's Summers in the paint. Dipsy do off the front of the rim. Van Zant with another rebound. No number, so they pull it out. In no hurry with six minutes to go in a five-point lead. Trying to put a mid-major in the national championship game. There's Hayward underneath drawing the foul. And it's on Green who doesn't like the call. I think he doesn't like the fact that he was there by himself. It's the fourth on Green. Double bonus, so two the rest of the way for Butler and a good free throw shooter stepping up to the line. This has been Butler's way of winning all season long, Jim. Get out to a lead, make it a possession by possession game. Throughout this tournament, they have cut down the opponent's field goal attempts by 10 to 15 percent, which is somewhere in the neighborhood of seven to 10 field goal attempts per game that they've kept the opposition from getting because they control the pace with their offense, ball security for the most part. And when it comes down to that type of game, their ability to turn you over and take care of it themselves and make free throws is a formula for winning. Plus nine and makes plus nine in attempts from the foul line this half. State's missed its last five from the field. And Corey Lucius has had a tough time dealing with Norad. Tom Izzo wants a foul, but just good, stiff, tenacious defense on the ball. And the switch off, Howard was over there to help out. Morgan in the paint. Take up and around on the floor, it's Morgan. Puts it back up and in. That might get him going. That might get him to finish strong here, although it's been a disjointed night for Raymar Morgan due to the foul trouble early. That might get his whole team going. They've yep. gone 524 without a basket. Howard working on Rowe. Left hand, no, and it's Rowe pulling it down with five minutes to play. That's his shot, though. He likes that left-handed half hook when he gets that defender on his backside. Rowe. Looking at challenging Howard. Swings it out to Allen instead. Ball stolen by Beasley. We talked about it earlier. The lack of an additional ball handler and playmaker at the guard position with Kalen Lucas being hurt. Here's Hayward. Three-point shot. Powered on the glass. 
Second chance. No! And coming out with it is Summers. He rushed it. He rushed it, Jim. He did great work and then rushed the shot. Timeout, Michigan State. Butler's missed its last seven. It's getting tight here. Four minutes to play. And Butler still has two fouls to give, Jim, before they go over the limit. Tom Izzo, he had that role that Butler's enjoying here in Indianapolis, the hometown hero role, if you will, last year as they uh, filled up Ford Field. Tom talked this week about going from hometown hero to the role of the villain, and there's Lupe Izzo. A little anxious there, isn't he? You can yep. see the nervousness there from Lupe. It's been such a good city for Michigan State. That uh -huh. uh, 79 Magic Championship team went through Indianapolis on their way to Salt Lake to win it. For Salt Lake, the site where Butler advanced from last week in the West. And down low, away from the action, there's a foul call against Norad. And that is going to be the fifth team foul on Butler. Well, you don't like to get one there when you had a couple of the give, but he's defending Darrell Summers. And Norred going to take a seat. And Zach Hahn, not quite the defender that Norred is, but he'll be matched up with Keebler. And Van Zant will be on Summers. Van Zant is very quick, but giving up some size. Good little button hook for Morgan. Fighting for it. Blocked by Hayward. Tapped out to Summers. But Morgan has to be quicker with his move and more decisive. Don't pump fake yourself out of a shot. Turn and face. If you've got a good look, take it right away. Corey Lucius. And that's off the hands of the Spartans. Butler's last field goal came at the 12-18 mark, leading by four Bulldogs. Jim Nancy, Clark Kellogg, Butler, I mentioned going to the break, Clark, eight and a half minutes. They've scored three points on all on three throws. No baskets in that stretch. 
But Tom Izzo and the Spartans, you know, they win close games. This is under his coaching. And there's the ball. <laughs> Licking his chops. Well, what's going? what needs to happen here? This could turn on one or two plays, Jim. Both teams have tightened up. Obviously, this game is close. What's at stake? You've got to play freely and look to get quick scoring opportunities. These teams are defending. You've got to attack off the dribble and try to make a play early in the shot clock. And there's a good look at a three. Feasley short. And I like that shot. I like that shot because that's relatively early in the shot clock. Now you just buckle up and play defense. If you're Michigan State, you've got to continue to try to attack inside. That's a foul on Beasley. By the way, that's nine straight missed shots by the Bulldogs. Third foul on Beasley and sixth team foul with 317 to go. Sheldon Mack not on the floor. He's played only eight of the 17 minutes in the second half. Trying to find Summers. Good job by Norred. Green. And that is going to be the fourth on Howard. Well, you can see what Michigan State's strategy is. It's been that way the whole half. Let's punch it inside. And there you see the bump by Howard after the good post-up position and the nice feed. Green did a good job of getting Howard behind him. And then Raymar got it right to him on time and on target. Green missed two free throws earlier in this half. So Howard with four, Norad Beasley with three. Keebler coming in for State. Morgan out. We're talking about close games under the directorship of Tom Izzo. They've been all close wins to get to Indianapolis. That's four right. wins by a total of 13 points. Mm -hmm. That sets a record in the seeding era in the tournament. Fewest, uh, lowest margin of victory combined ever to make it to the Final Four. First team to make a field goal wins. It's going to take a big shot. It may be free throws, but I think it's going to be a big shot that needs to be made for one of these teams to pull it out. It's been a long time for Butler. Ten straight misses. Ten minutes without one. This is a Michigan State team that shut down Northern Iowa without a field goal the last ten and a half minutes of that Sweet 16 game. Same kind of thing they're doing here. 36 to go, Michigan State calls a timeout. Continue to monitor Shelvin Mack. He was stretching during that timeout, but not reinserted into the lineup. Battling muscle cramps, and he's their second leading scorer. And he's also one of their best playmakers, Jim. A guy you can give the ball to late in the shot clock who can get his own shot. Green. Jukes defending. Out to Summers, thought about it. Takes it to the paint, stripped away by Norad. And they've got the numbers. Hayward, back to the other wing, and Van Zandt is clobbered by Rowe. Good attack, though, by Butler. They had the numbers advantage and didn't hesitate to get right to the rim. What a big turn of events. They had a couple of looks maybe possible from the three range. They bypassed it, and then Norad he is some defender. He sure is. He has a terrific knack for staying in his stance and then going in there and pulling that ball out as dribblers try to get to the rim. Two shots for Van Zandt. A 6-1 junior from Tampa, Florida. Do you know we keep lamenting how Butler can't hit a shot down here? Over the last eight minutes, Butler's put up three points. Michigan State's put up three points. Well, we've been parked in a tight window for point production here. Yeah. But we didn't expect anything different, Jim, quite honestly. These teams have won with defense. 
and resiliency and resolve and have played a number of close games and they're doing it again and at the end of the day as you take a look at Shelvin Mack wishing he could be out there helping his team a big shot or free throws will determine the outcome it's back to a four point margin Draymond leaning in getting the basket Down to two. Look at Tom Izzo almost a half court, imploring his team to stay in a defensive stance and keep fighting. This is a guy I think's got to look to be aggressive for Butler. Kicks it to the corner. Gordon Hayward has to think about trying to make a play. Shelvin Mack is not out there. He's his team's best player with the ball. Norred driving in. Bounce pass. Hayward puts it up. No. Rebound back to Hayward puts it up. Yes, and at long last Butler has a field goal some 10 minutes down the road Big bucket off a second shot opportunity Jim and what a save as it was going out Terrific of bounds Terrific effort There haven't been many of those in terms of second shots either way this half Summers and a reach in call Norred thought he got all orange Good look for Hayward what an effort. That was Van Zandt who came in and got that ball. What a play by the six-footer. Meanwhile, the fourth foul was just picked up by Norred. Two shots coming for Summers. And his best buddy, Kalen Lucas. Talking about heart. Michigan State really looks to execute some of its down screens, cross screens. Summers coming along the baseline. He gets a stagger. Good defense by Van Zant. Mismatch got to go to work. Ball on the floor. And a foul call on Hayward. It'll be a one and one. It's the ninth team foul on Butler. Boy, what a big offensive rebound that was by Rowe. That's well, something we've seen Michigan a pair State. of them, Jim. Yeah. One leads to a layup for Gordon Hayward at the Butler end. Van Zant came up with it in that time. And look who's coming in. Shelvin Mack. Well, a good effort by Van Zant. Shelvin Mack. I know he's saying, I got to go. I've got to get out there. Yep. 56 seconds. It's a one on one coming up for Green. Well, the first thing of importance now is to block out in case this free throw is missed. They are two of eight in the second half from the line. Oh, oh I thought that was long, Jimmy. <laughs> Lupe can't, Lupe Izzo cannot watch. <laughs> She's not the only one. <laughs> so there are plenty of folks on the edge of their seat here. Hearts pounding. But when you're out there in a game like this, you love it as a competitor. You don't have any time to worry about being nervous or afraid. Game tied, 56 seconds. Tracy Stevens looks on. Full court pressure by the Spartans. Oh, it's one point. It's a one-point game. Butler, 50-49. Beg your pardon. Taylor. 20-second difference between game and shot clock here, Jim. Those two big free throws by Green. Well, he's come up big all season long for this Spartans team. Norad. Shot rattles out. Michigan State has it with 28 seconds. Timeout, Michigan State. 23 seconds. That's all there is. Nail biter in Indianapolis.
by Clark, 23 seconds, no shot clock necessary. What is the game plan for Michigan State? Well, first of all, because you're down, I think you've got to try to get the best shot quickly. That means you look to Summers. You've got a number of options here, Jim. You've got Draymond Green, who's been able to produce down in the low post for you, and you know he's capable of knocking down big clutch free throws if he gets fouled. You also have Darrell Summers, who can give you a back cut, because he's such a high flyer, you can throw it over the top, or you can have him coming off screens, and he's hit big shot after big shot throughout this tournament. So the full menu in your playbook is open, but I think you talk about and look at who Draymond Green is matched up with. Draymond Morgan is a post-up option, and then Darrell Summers is a guy you can back cut or have him come off down screens, but I think you have to go relatively quickly here. Because you're trailing by one, you can't afford to milk too much of this clock, of course, just in case you don't score. Of course, Lucius has already been the hero. Round two, he has it now, gives it up to Summers with 16 seconds. Trying to post Green. Green outside, Hayward defending. Now with 10 seconds, in the paint, shot short, rebound, Morad. The Spartans fans and Tom Izzo wanted a foul, but I think that was just good defense by the Butler Bulldogs, particularly Gordon Hayward. Draymond Green has just fouled out, Clark. Let's take a look at it. He backs in. Oh, that's good basketball there. I don't think there's a foul. Tom Izzo wanted a foul, but you didn't I don't see it. See it. No, see it. no. I think that's a good challenge in the basket area. So free throws coming, a pair for the Butler Bulldogs. For Ronald Norad. And even if he converts both of them, Jim, it's a one possession game with plenty of time as Draymond Green will have to watch the rest of this one. That young man gave another outstanding effort. Norwood at the line for two. Made only three out of 12 in the tournament from the line. Oh. No problem there, Jim. He's only 61% on the year. But sometimes a guy like this, who's the president of his class as a sophomore, has a way to rise to the occasion. Leaders do that. Yep. Michigan State needs a three to tie. Now you think about fouling here if you're Butler. I think you think about fouling. Tom Izzo. Being told to get back. I don't think he box. wanted a timeout. I'm not sure. Draymond Green pulls him back. Bear hugs the coach. He knows he can't afford it for his coach to. He'll get plenty of latitude here, but I'm not sure. I don't know if he wanted a timeout there or not, Jim. Let's try to take a look here. The ball is rolled in. It doesn't start until the clock, till the ball is touched. The clock won't start. So I don't think there's any issue there, but apparently beyond what we could see, perhaps Tom Izzo called a timeout or the well, He was pointing at the clock the whole time. He thought that he thought it started the clock too had started soon. early. But it sure doesn't look like no, it. No, it doesn't look like it from our vantage point. Raymond, Raymond. Raymar Morgan going to bowling ball and inbounds. It hasn't started. Touch, start. Oh, but did it go from 6.1? Well, maybe it moved super fast, but there was nothing out of line about when the clock started. So the officials have gone to the replay monitor. Judd Heathcote, Magic Johnson looking on. Well, if this doesn't change, if that's 5.5 and it stays that way, even if it goes to another couple of tenths of a second, I think Butler has to think about fouling here up three. Right there is when it appeared to start. Oh, yeah, I don't see anything. 
Out of the ordinary there. Now Brad Stevens is pointing back toward the baseline saying wait a minute they've got to inbound this ball three quarter court not mid court they have added time they have actually added three tenths of a second they did advocate they did add the three seconds Jim but I still three tenths of a second but I think you got a foul here Butler is not putting anybody on the ball and if the when it's caught, I think you've got a foul. Austin Thornton to inbound. Don't let them have a chance at a three-point shot. There's the foul. Nope, no call. Lucius There's is a foul, foul with two seconds. There it is. That was about as well executed as you can do it in terms of making Michigan State use some time and then making sure you foul a player that's not in the act of shooting. This not a foul here at midcourt. No, he hit the ball. He got all yeah. ball, and then he bumped him a little bit, but that's incidental contact. All ball there, and then there's the intentional foul by Van Zandt. I think that's about as well executed as you can do it from a defensive standpoint, Jim. So Lucius at the line for two. He's got to think about making the first and then trying to miss the second. I just don't think you can afford to make this second one. Now, when you miss it, Jim, you've got to make, you've got to make this a natural miss. You can't just bang it off the rim. You've got to shoot it so that it hits the rim and has some kind of bounce to it. Back of the rim. Rebound Hayward. And Butler wins it. Butler's going on to the national championship game. What a story unfolding in this NCAA tournament. Everyone knew Butler was going to be dangerous this season, 11th in the preseason polls, but they come out of a mid-major, out of the Horizon League, playing conference opponents, Wright State, Wisconsin Green Bay, Wisconsin-Milwaukee, Valparaiso, Cleveland State, Detroit, Illinois, Chicago, Youngstown State, and out of the Horizon, the Bulldogs will now take the hopes of all the small schools to Monday night. They will be there with an opportunity to win it, Jim. We said all along this team is for real. And they showed it with resiliency and resolve and a couple of big free throws from Norad. Bulldog looked like he knew it all along, was never concerned. Butlers in the game Monday night. Greg Gumbel and company coming up, and we'll hear from Butler in a moment.